Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this video I want to talk about queries. So we take a look at some simple operations such as equal, not equal, greater than, and logical operations such as and and or. We will also cover sorting the query by a field as well as offsets and limits. As you know from the previous videos, I store each field index inside a B plus tree. The nodes at the bottom of the tree are known as leaf nodes. In a unique index, these nodes' values are pointers to the cluster ID. We also know that the keys in B plus tree are sorted. If the index is not unique, each key's value would either be a bitmap or a list, which we have covered this in another video called duplicate indexes. In all of these cases, we can create iterators of cluster IDs. For duplicate indexes, we first grab a key from B plus tree, iterate over cluster IDs, and then move on to next keys. For unique indexes, we get the cluster IDs as we iterate over the keys. For simplicity, let's say our example index is a unique index. To have a better understanding on how I have implemented queries, let's first agree on some things. In episode 14, we have seen that an executed query returns an iterator of cluster IDs, which can be used to extract data from DB. If we assume our current tree is for an index called age, each of the operations should return an iterator. For example, if we look for age equal to 10, we have an empty iterator, and if we look for age equal to 5, we get an iterator with a single cluster ID. For duplicate indexes, this iterator could be larger. B plus trees already support fast key lookups, so we don't need to iterate over all leaf nodes. To get all items that are not equal to a value, for example 20, we iterate over leaf nodes and only return cluster IDs for keys that are not equal to 20. Mathematical comparisons are a little bit different. Let's say we want all the cluster IDs of ages above 21. In our example tree, 21 does not exist. So first, we have to find the position where 21 would be if it existed, and then iterate for rest of the keys. At this point, we can have a support of offsets and limits as well. Again, note that the output of queries are not lists, but iterators. In other languages, such as Python, we know them as generators. We don't know if next items exist or not until we call hasNext method. Well then will you explain it to me? To get to an offset, we should call the next method as much as the offset number to skip, and then we count the next items we grab till we either reach the limit or the has next method returns false. Thanks, man. Now let's move to or operation. Our example query says, where age is greater than 20 or height is greater than 150. Each of these queries can return an iterator of cluster IDs. The goal is simple, return an iterator that does not repeat an item. To do so, we need a set of visited cluster IDs. We begin by combining all of the iterators, and then track visited IDs as we iterate over it. Whenever we get to an ID that is already visited, we skip it, and we do this until there is no item left in the combined iterator. Things are different with AND operations. Let's say we have a query like age below 20, and height above 150, and the output of each query individually is as you see. Of course, in this case, our output should only be cluster IDs 2 and 5, but we will change the example as well. But things are a little more complicated in terms of memory and performance. One approach would be to immediately load all of these iterators into memory as a list or a different data structure, and then find items that exist in all of the collections, but then what if our requested offset was zero, and the limit was one? We could have imported a large amount of data into memory just to get a single item. So, we need a different approach. It's one big memory, ain't it, sugar? Let's first add IDs to our iterators and name them iterator one and two. We can grab our first iterator and compare each of its items with other iterators. We should first understand that the size of iterators don't matter. If iterator 1 was smaller, we'd only compare 1 and 2 with second iterator, 
and we don't need to combine iterators to check more items from the second iterator, since we would already be sure they won't be available in the first iterator, and don't match our condition. So, we begin by grabbing an item from first iterator, and compare it with items from next iterators. We see that the second item of second iterator matches our candidate, number 2, so we add this 2 to the output. We move on to check the next item in the first iterator, and the number is 1. Now, what happens if we want to compare it with items from the next iterator? We have already went forward on the second iterator, and since we can't reset iterators, we can't go back and access the first item. If we continue iteration, we only get 5 and 8. Therefore, per each iterator, we need a sort of a cache that contains previously visited items. We could use a bitmap, or a set. Our goal for this cache is to tell us if an item exists with O of 1 time complexity. We can go for data structures such as bitmap or hash set, and each one have, have its own advantage and disadvantage, which I will mention soon. In this approach, we lazily load iterators into the memory. So let's say after visiting each item in iterators other than the first one, we add that item into the cache. So at this point, we'd have 1 and 2 in cache for a second iterator. Before we compare current candidate, in this case, number 1, with items from other iterators, we check their cache to see if it contains the candidate. In this case, number 1 is already in the cache of the second iterator, so we add it to the output. Next, we have number 5 as candidate. It's not in the cache, so we move forward in the second iterator till we find it. We add 5 to the cache since we have iterated till there, but since it's equal to our candidate, we add to the output as well. Our next item, 6, is not present in the cache, and does not equal to 8, so the iteration is over. The same approach could be used for sorting the results by a field as well. We first grab an iterator of all the cluster IDs sorted by the field value. Again, this doesn't mean the cluster ID iterators are sorted. Next, we create cache of the conditions cluster IDs as we iterate over them, and eventually we get sorted iterator by the field we want. As I mentioned earlier, this cache can be implemented with either a bitmap or a hash set, or perhaps you'd have a different suggestion, but the lookup should take O of 1. Bitmaps may take less space if the data we enter to it doesn't have a gap. For example, adding only two numbers, 1 and 1 million, to a bitmap causes a large waste of bit space, compared to hash sets. That's why we may have to consider bitmap compression. The challenge is that we don't know the count, or the maximum number in each iterator, while I want you to be aware of this challenge, I won't be focusing on it in my videos. However, bitmap compression is something to keep in mind for duplicate indexes as well. You can find the code to and iterator in operations.query package in the repository. This class implements iterator interface itself and accepts list of iterators to perform the and operation. Don't forget to like and subscribe! Corey. This class implements iterator interface itself, and accepts list of iterators to perform the AND operation. Satar Satinonainonain. What the actual fuck?